Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun, Will Travel. Original air date is May 10th, 1959, and the title is The Statue of San Sebastian. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. You own one of the largest ranches in California. The most cattle, the best land, and the toughest riders. But I'll tell you something, Mr. Crown. The little mission of San Sebastian is going to defeat you. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Ah, oh, Mr. Paladin. Mmm. Mmm. Good morning, hey boy. Oh, hope I don't spoil breakfast, but mm, no, no. Telegram came for you just now. Mm, thank you. Oh, uh, eating breakfast in dining room most unusual for you. A uh, rare occasion. Hey boy, who's that young lady over there, sitting alone at the table next to the window? Oh, oh, oh yes, uh, that young lady check in two days ago. Sweet uh, two one two. Alone. Alone. Mm. Charming. Charming. Where is are you up on telegram? Oh, yes. Uh, hey, boy. Why don't you ask the young lady if I might join her for a cup of coffee? She must be lonely. Oh, so early in the morning you... Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, I rushed telegram. What happened? Make social engagement. Uh, w- wait a minute, hey, boy. Oh, now what happened? I've changed my mind. This telegram's from Mr. Ian Crown in San Sebastian, California. He offers a rather large sum of money. Would you send him a wire, please? Have we gone? We'll travel. Yes. I'll be leaving on the next stage. What about poor, charming, lonely young lady? <laughs> That'll have to wait until I return. Unfortunately, business comes first. <laughs> This is Frank Knight speaking for the world's most honored watch, Longine. In the conquest of the Old West, the men won fame through feats of bravery and daring. Today, things are different, but fame can still be won. How wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. These great honors are symbols of achievement. In the field of time, did you know that Longine watches have won more great public honors than any other watch in the world. This is true. The highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet the Longines, the world's most honored watch, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping, is not costly. Many models are priced as low as $75. Visit your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. The stage ride down the Camino Real brought me at last to San Sebastian, one of the mission towns established a hundred years ago by the followers of Junipero Serra. I knew this country well, its low green valleys and crisp ocean air. I did not know Ian Crown. I inquired at the stage office. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? How far is it to the Crown Ranch? Ian Crown's place? Yes. A little past a mile, southeast of here. Head right on out the main road, then take the fork to the left just before you get to the mission. Any place I can rent a horse around here? Well, the livery stable just across the street, mister. Can't miss it. The only building on that side. Thanks. Senor? Yes? Would you give something for the mission? Something for the mission? Please, you give money? A donation? See, si, please, a donation. Well, I think we can manage that. 
I should have a dollar in my wallet. Oh, senor, you are very rich. So much money. Ah, uh, see now. Yes, here we are. Yeah. Hey, hey, come back here. You little thief. What happened, mister? Well, that boy stole my wallet. Pedro? You know him? Yeah, that was Pedro from the mission. He asked me for a donation, and when I offered him a dollar, he grabbed my wallet and ran off. That doesn't seem like Pedro. He's a good boy. He's got a good wallet. Did you say he's from the mission? That's right. He lives there. I hadn't planned on it, but I think I'll pay this mission a visit. I figured that if Crown had waited for me to travel all the way from San Francisco, a few more hours' delay wouldn't hurt, and I wanted my wallet back. It wasn't bulging with money, but there were papers I couldn't replace. At the mission of San Sebastian, a Franciscan monk met me, introducing himself as Father Bartolome. As he walked through the cool, flower-filled courtyard of the lovely old mission, I told the priest about Pedro and what had happened. He invited me to his study. Won't you be seated, Senor Paladin? Thank you. I'm so very sorry about all this. How much money did you have in your wallet? $22 in cash. There was also a bank note for $50. Uh, I have exactly $22 on my desk. They are undoubtedly yours. Pedro brought it to me less than 30 minutes ago. He was somewhat out of breath and quite nervous. Your story explains his actions. Here you are, Senor Paladin. Thank you, Father. I don't suppose he said anything about the wallet. No, Senor. Do you think he still has it? Perhaps he can answer that question himself. Will you excuse me, Senor Paladin? Pedro. Sí, padre. Would you come in here, please? Hey, Pedro, you know why this man is here. Sí, padre. Is it not true that you took his wallet and ran away? Sí. Hey, that was very wrong, Pedro. Uh, why would you do this? I'm sorry, Padre. But there was so much money. I, I, I had to take it for San Sebastian. It, it was wrong, Padre. I, I, I know it was wrong. Hey, uh, where is the wallet now, my son? In the stable. Please get it and bring it back to this room. Hey, Padre. Father, I'm sorry this has happened. I hope you won't find it necessary to be too severe with the boy. <laughs> no, senor. He has learned his lesson already. Well, why does Pedro beg for donations for this mission? It's by far the best preserved and the most beautiful of all the missions I've seen. Oh, si, senor. San Sebastian is a diamond of all missions. Thanks to senor Crown. Ian Crown? Si. Sure, no, him? no, we haven't met, but I was on my way to his ranch when this happened. But what is his connection with this mission? Well, Senor, several years ago, before California became a part of the United States, the Mexican government sold the missions to raise defense funds for their treasury. It was then that Senor Crown became the owner of San Sebastian. You mean Crown bought the mission from the Mexican government? Si, sí, Senor. Uh huh. While most of the others wasted to ruin, this mission prospered under the skilled management of Senor Crown. But then, when President Lincoln signed the bill giving the missions back to the church, I said your crown was forced to relinquish this mission on the land around it. He was paid for the land, wasn't he? Ah, si, senor. But he was not in sympathy with the price. To compensate for the additional payment he felt was due to him, he took the statue of our patron saint, San Sebastian, from its rightful place in this mission. He is now in his home, and he refuses to return it to us. Do you think he'll ever give the statue back to the mission? No, senor. Not unless we pay him for it. How much does he want? Two thousand dollars. An impossible sum. It would take many years to accumulate that much money. And that's why Pedro begs for donations. <clears throat> Our people are most anxious to have his statue returned. Well, certainly. How much money have you collected, Father? Senor Paladin, this is not a rich parish. In ten years, we have secured only $985. Come in. I have... Brought the wallet, Padre. Bueno, give it to Senor Paladin. 
senor. Thank you, Pedro. I'm sorry, senor. Please forgive me. Senor Paladin, please check your wallet for the banknote you mentioned. It's here, Father. Everything here. Pedro. Si, sí, senor. <laughs> At the stage office, I was going to give you a donation. You remember? Si. Sí. Would you accept this five-dollar gold piece for the statue of San Sebastian? Oh, si, sí, senor. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> Let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. That's who you know is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. tried a Pepsi lately? The green rolling acres that surrounded the Crown Ranch were covered with giant oaks and thousands of black Angus cattle. And a mile beyond the main gate, on a tree-studded knoll, sat the house of Ian Crown, imposing, rich, almost feudal. From my talk with Father Bartolome, I had pictured Crown as the typical elderly, austere rancher. Instead, I found a cordial man who was having more than a share of trouble with an outlaw, Sancho Fernandez. No, during the last three months, he's robbed two of my payroll shipments. He's run off near 300 head of prime beef. Now, he's got to be stopped, Paladin. I'm depending on you to bring him in. I've never heard this Fernandez before. Does he confine his activities to this part of the country? <laughs> Strictly to my reign. To your reign? Yeah. Hasn't he been plaguing the other ranchers? No, no just me. Hmm. Why has he singled you out? Well, his brother used to work for me. He was killed in an accident during a cattle drive. Fernandez thinks I'm responsible. But I'm not. The man was thrown from his saddle. It was an accident. I see. Hey, let me fill your glass. Huh? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. That's excellent wine. Yeah, thank you. We make it ourselves. Grapes come from my own vineyard. You must be proud of this ranch, Mr. Crown. It's one of the finest spreads I've seen. Yeah. Taking a lot of years, a lot of hard work to make it what it is. I'm not going to let an old renegade like Fernandez start nipping away at it. Well, what do you say, Paladin? I say yes, Mr. Crown. I'll take the job. For the $1,000? Right. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. What are your plans? I don't know yet. It'll take me a few days to learn what I need. Oh, of course. This statue, Mr. Crown. I've been admiring it. Well, that's San Sebastian, Miss Spellin. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I was talking to Father Bartolome at the mission this afternoon. Oh, I see. Suppose he told you what a he and I am, because I won't give him back your statue. <laughs> We didn't discuss your personal I'll give faith. that statue back when I get the money. Men. Mr. Crown. Oh, what is it, Carl? Fernandez. He stopped the stage and took the payroll. Oh. Money. Anybody hurt? No, he made us get out of the stage, took the money from me, and then stampeded the horses. And that's the third time. Oh. Paladin, this is my foreman, Carl Stocker. How do you do? How are you? Carl here is bringing the payroll money from the bank in Coldwater. Where did it happen? About three miles before we got into San Sebastian, we had a walk into town. And he's had plenty of time to hide out. Mr. Crown, you'll be needing more money from the bank to meet the payroll. That's right. I'll go up to Coldwater tomorrow and bring it back. Now, you let everybody know I'll be returning alone, on horseback. 
I had concealed the payroll money under my shirt and was on the trail back from Coldwater. A mile out of San Sebastian, there was still no sign of Sancho Fernandez. But it didn't disappoint me. Stop, senor. My rifle is pointed directly between your shoulders. It would be a mistake to turn around. I believe you. Now, drop your gun belt to the ground. Now, dismount and stand with your back to me. You have some money for Senor Crown. Where is it? You're well informed. Money. Where is it? In my shirt. With a gun, no doubt. Do not move. Turn around. Nothing. You'll drop the money to the ground. Careful. Now you may turn around and take a few steps away. That will be far enough. Now you will not be needing your horse. Now, just stand steady, senor. It's not too long a walk to the rancho. Give my regards to senor Crown. Sancho, there's a derringer pointing at your back. Oh, Drop your rifle. Don't get far with a hole in your back, Senor Fernandez. A bunch of the boys are whooping it up every weekday on CBS Radio. Variety spices the airwaves with fun every time CBS Radio turns them loose. The boys are Pat Buttram, Art Linkletter, and Galen Drake. Here's a threesome that's really awesome for its total output of sheer pleasure. The remarkable wit of Buttram. Linkletter's unending imagination in creating stunts and surprises. Gale and Drake's way with words and stories. Put them all together, and you have a distinctly flavored, different sound. Only a network could assemble for your weekday pleasure. And only the CBS radio network does. Listen in daily, or as often as you like. With these boys whooping it up as you move about the house, one thing that's out the window with the dust is boredom. The Gale and Drake Show... Art Linkletter's House Parties from Hollywood, and Pat Buttram's Just Entertainment. One at a time or all together, they're good, clean fun in every weather. Try them often. Sancho left an easy trail to follow through the yellow wheat field. He had managed to stay on his horse, but he had lost a lot of blood along the way. His trail led to the mission of San Sebastian. Senor Paladin? The padre has told me Fernandez was here. Really? He is dead. Let us go to my study. Why do you ask for Sancho Fernandez? Ian Crown hired me to bring him in. Uh, are you responsible for this? We had a gunfight a mile or so out of town. He robbed me of some money I was delivering to Crown. I followed him here. He was almost dead when he arrived. He asked for a sanctuary. Did he have the money on him? Oh, si, senor. He told me that he wanted to donate it for the statue of San Sebastian. But that money belongs to Crown. I suspected that for... We are aware of Sancho's hatred for Senor Crown. I sent Pedro to the ranch to bring Senor Crown here. Father, I just want you to know that it was unavoidable. Under the circumstances, I had to shoot Sancho. Ah, oh, si, senor. It was bound to happen. Sancho has been misguided since the death of his brother. Senor Crown, uh, coming. Hello, father. Ah. Uh. Paladin, I didn't know you were here. 
Uh, Pedro told me Sancho was wounded. Where is he? He's dead. How'd it happen? Gunfight. He ambushed me on the trail back a ways. Ran my horse off and took the money. We exchanged shots. His horse brought him here. Oh. And your crown, I believe this belongs to you. That's the payroll money, Crown. Yeah. Well, thank you, Father. Sorry you had to get mixed up in my private affairs. Well, uh, I'm going back to the ranch, Paladin. No, I think I'll stay here, Mr. Crown. I want to take the next stage back to San well, Francisco. Well, we've got a little business to finish up. Yeah, I know. You owe me a check for $1,000. That's right. Well, I want you to turn my fee over to the mission. To what? And Father Bartolome, you told me you had $985 in the savings fund for the statue. Well, no, senor, there are $990. You gave payroll $5, remember? Uh, I remember. Well, here. I'd also like to donate this $10. This should bring your savings to an even thousand. Give it to Mr. Crown. Well, what are you doing, Paladin? The thousand dollars father has accumulated these past ten years along with my fee. Totals two thousand dollars, Mr. Crown. You should be able to return the statue of San Sebastian to the mission in time for Mass this Sunday. American youths are flabby, out of condition physically and mentally. That's a strong statement, isn't it? But an organization called the President's Council on Youth Fitness, brought into being in 1956, was created because of evidence indicating that in this era of technology and science, the fitness of our young men and women has become a matter of increasing concern. This week, Youth Fitness Week, emphasizes that human resiliency springs from mental, emotional, and spiritual as well as physical elements. We should, all of us, take a close look at our community to make sure it is providing youth with the social, educational, and athletic facilities they need to develop into strong, full-rounded individuals. The mental aspect of fitness requires a sound, solid education. If you're a parent of teenagers, be sure they remain in high school through their senior year. If you're a high school student, remember that diploma is much more than just a piece of paper. Stay in school and graduate. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Albert Alley and adapted for radio by Frank Michael. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Don Diamond, James Nusser, Richard Beals, and Perry Cook. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.